Hi and welcome to this online training video for Automation Studio. In this video, we'll be looking at the thermal simulation. Before we get started, one has to know that the thermal simulation in Automation Studio is limited to 20 components or 25 points. You can keep track of your points in your system by looking at this box here. At the moment, I have 10 points out of the 80 I'm allowed in a single schematic for the educational version of Automation Studio. To be able to do some thermal simulation, you first have to activate it. To do so, you have to go in the project properties, either through this here, project and project properties, or go in the simulation tab and open simulation options. In project and properties, under fluid simulation, you have to check the thermal simulation here and activate. It's good to know that in the fluid system tab under hydraulic installations, you can change the initial fluid temperature and the initial ambient temperature as well. I'll leave them to 77 for the sake of this video. This is the circuit we'll be using, a reservoir, pump, safety valve, throttle valve, a cooler, and an interdirectional valve. You have to know that all the components, line included, have a thermal section in the data sheet. Here, technical thermal with heat exchange area and heat transfer coefficient. All the components come with by default parameter but they all can be custom in order to reflect any specific components desired. Lines are components as well. We have a heat transfer coefficient and the area will be computed with the length of the line. You have to know that at first, by default, all the reservoir come with infinite volume. If you keep it this way, the fluid in the reservoir will never heat up. So better to turn it false. There are a few components to do heat transfer in Automation Studio. They can be found under the hydraulic and fluid conditioning. As usual, when you select the route, you have the most commonly used components. So you have heater, cooler heater, cooler heater with thermal switch. And if you expand, you have a couple of coolers here with the heat exchanger and you have the heaters under the other category. To use the heat exchanger, you'll need a cooling fluid circuit, which can be either the same fluid or another one. If you want more information about how to define a second fluid, please have a look at the fluid and line manager video. In the cooler, there are two parameters here, the deactivation temperature and the switching temperature. The deactivation temperature is the temperature under which the cooler will stop cooling and the switching temperature is the temperature at which the cooler will, will start cooling. So for the sake of this video, I want this to be 50. Just make sure that it will not turn off and I'll put the switching temperature uh, 80 so it will quickly turn on. You can also set the maximum dissipation rate and other operating condition parameters. Now we can go to simulation. You know this here with my opening at 100% there's not much heat created in my throttle valve but the more I close my orifice the more turbulence is created, the more heat is generated, the faster the temperature goes up. So at the moment, all the heat goes straight to my reservoir. It's my reservoir, as you can see in this dynamic measuring instruments here, the temperature goes up. And as the temperature goes up, the viscosity goes down. You have to know that Automation Studio computes the viscosity in order of the temperature and that the viscosity is 
taking in consideration for all the pressure loss and all the simulation throughout Automation Studio. Here, activating this directional valve, I will be sending my fluid through my cooler. And you see, it's, it gets in at 99 Fahrenheit at the moment and gets out at 96. So the cooling, the cooler uh, cools my fluid as it goes through. Thanks for watching this online training video for Automation Studio. We invite you to watch the other videos and we'd like to thank you for your time.